USS Texas has recently entered dry dock and is undergoing work to keep her around for future generations. And if you have not, please go check out their wonderful channel and website. I wanted to make a video to shed some more light on this amazing ship. Texas is the only remaining dreadnought type ship left in the world and has quite the story to tell. So much like my video on HMS Warspite, I'm going to split her story up into two parts, one for a pre-war, World War I, and interwar career, and another one for a World War II and post-war career. Following the Wyoming class, the United States needed to keep pace with other navies of the world, like the Royal Navy, Imperial Japanese Navy, and the Kaiserliche Marina. So it designed the New York class of battleships. USS Texas and the New York would be quite the change for the United States Navy. It was their first battleship armed with 14-inch guns, making it a rather large change for them. But it was their last with coal-fired boilers. She would displace 27,000 tons standard displacement and around 28,400 tons full load. She would be equipped with 14 coal-fired boilers that would power two triple expansion engines that drove two screws, with an output of 28,100 shaft horsepower, giving her a top speed of around 21 knots. Her armament would consist of 10 14-inch or 356mm 45 caliber guns and twin turrets, with two turrets superfiring forward, one turret in the middle of the ship, and two turrets superfiring aft. Her secondary battery would consist of 21 5-inch or 127mm 51 caliber guns. She would also be equipped with four 3-pounder or 47mm saluting guns and two 1-pounder or 37mm guns, and four underwater torpedo tubes to round out her armament. Her armor belt would vary. She would have a belt between 10 and 12 inches, or 254 and 305 millimeters. Her deck would range from 1.5 to 3 inches, or 38 to 76 millimeters. Her main battery turrets would have 14 inches, or 356 millimeters on the face, and 4 inches, or 102 millimeters on the top part. The sides would have between 8 and 9 inches, or 203 and 229 millimeters of armor. The rear of the turret would have 8 inches, or 203 millimeters of armor. Texas would be laid down in April of 1911, launched in May of 1912, and commissioned the United States Navy in March of 1914. Texas's career would start off rather quickly after being completed. With a brief stint in New York City where she had her fire control system installed, she headed to Mexico. She went to Mexico due to unrest in the country and because American interests in the country were under threat. Texas did so without the benefit of a shakedown cruise and post-shakedown repairs. She would remain in Mexican waters for two months, eventually leaving in early August of 1914 and ending up in New York City's Navy Yard. She remained there until early September of 1914, where she sailed for Tampico and then to Veracruz in Mexico. Then, in late December, she made her way to New York City Navy Yard for repairs. Then, in late December, she made her way to New York City Navy Yard for repairs that lasted until February 16, 1915, after which she finally began normal fleet operations. In May of that year, Texas and several other American battleships would rescue passengers from a passenger ship. Now, something worthy of noting in 1916, she'd be the first U.S. battleship to mount anti-aircraft guns with two 3-inch or 76mm 50 caliber guns. Now, when the United States joined World War I, Texas found herself anchored in the mouth of the York River in the Chesapeake Bay with the other battleships of the Atlantic Fleet. Staying in the Hampton Roads area until late 1917, where then she sailed for New York and for an overhaul and then to Port Jefferson, where she ran aground on Block Island. For three days, they couldn't manage to get the ship free, but with the assistance of tugs, she was finally pulled free, and after some more repairs and the reduction of her secondary battery, she arrived at Scapa Flow in the United Kingdom in January of 1918 to join the rest of the American battleships in Battleship Division 9, which was the American contribution to the Grand Fleet for the war. Battleship Division 9 was by then known as 6th Battle Squadron in the Grand Fleet, consisting of USS Florida, Wyoming, New Mexico, Delaware, Texas, and later Arkansas to replace Delaware. Texas's duties while serving in the Grand Fleet would consist of convoy escort missions and the occasional forays to reinforce the British battle line whenever German heavy units threatened the United Kingdom or the blockade of the North Sea. One of her first missions was to sortie with the entire fleet to support the 4th Battle Squadron and then return to Scapa Flow until the 8th of March, where she then escorted a convoy and returned there on the 13th. Later on in April, she and her division mates entered the Firth of Forth and then escorting a convoy where she then returned to the United Kingdom on the 20th of April. Then on the 24th, she would sortie with the entire fleet to support the 2nd Battle Squadron the day after the High Seas Fleet sortie to threaten the Norwegian coast where an allied convoy was. The Germans retreated on the 25th and so did the Grand Fleet after they realized they could not catch the Germans. May was a quiet month for Texas where she was stationed out of the Firth of Forth 
Then, in June, she and her division mates returned to Scapa Flow. Her next major operation was on July 4th, where she participated in war games with the Royal Navy until July 8th. Texas and her division mates went to the Firth of Forth and pretty much remained there until the end of the war, participating in regularly scheduled operations, though. She accompanied the Grand Fleet to meet the surrendering High Seas Fleet, and then Texas and her division mates went to Portland Harbor, arriving on December the 4th. On the 12th of December, Texas and the rest of Battleship Division 9 would escort President Woodrow Wilson to Brest, France, where on the 14th of December, Texas and the other American battleships would depart for the United States and arrive on the day after Christmas in New York City. Texas would receive a much-needed overhaul and then return to service in early 1919. In March, she became the first American battleship to launch airplanes, doing so off the coast of Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Then, in the summer of 1919, Texas would head to the Pacific and join the Pacific Fleet, where she would spend the next five and a half years. In early January of 1924, she returned to the East Coast for an overhaul and to participate in a training cruise to Europe. Then, while in November, she sank the unfinished battleship Washington in compliance with the Washington Naval Treaty. Then, in July of 1925, she went into Norfolk Naval Yard for modernization, where her cage masts were replaced her coal-fired boilers were replaced by oil-fire ones, as well as her fire control systems were upgraded, along with her anti-aircraft battery. Her underwater protection was greatly increased with the addition of torpedo blisters, and her underwater torpedo tubes were removed. Texas was designated the flagship of the United States Navy and resumed duties on the eastern seaboard. She then did a tour in the Pacific from September to December of 1927. From 1927 to 1931, her career was pretty quiet, with escorting dignitaries to conferences and the usual training in war games. 1931, she headed to the Pacific Fleet via the Panama Canal to San Diego, California. During her time in the Pacific, she served as flagship for the fleet and flagship for Battleship Division 1. In the summer of 1937, she would be assigned to the Atlantic Fleet as flagship of the training detachment, and then, in early 1939, she became flagship of the Atlantic Squadron, where she would mainly focus on training and drills. She would receive the first shipborne radar for testing in December of 1938, designed and made by a commercial company. In 1939, when the Second World War broke out, Texas would begin operating neutrality patrols in an attempt to keep the war out of the Western Hemisphere. As the United States shifted to help the Allies more, Texas would escort convoys carrying Lend-Lease to the United Kingdom. Texas would find herself in Casco Bay, Maine, when she heard of the news of the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Imperial Japanese Navy. And that's where we'll leave Texas until the second part of this series.